that's my favorite part. I don't know what happens, but it just seems to get quiet around 6 o'clock. Good evening. We welcome everybody with us tonight at our board meeting. The agendas are obviously posted on the three walls. If we, uh, we will follow that agenda. And we're honored this evening to have uh, some special guests with us, but one particularly. We'd like to recognize uh, Judge Michelle Heward and her husband with us this day. Thank you for being with us. And uh, they have a special recognition in their family that will happen a little bit later. To begin our meeting this night, we'd like to have a presentation of the FBLA video presentation of the first state, first place state winning of a public service. And I'd like to turn the time over for the announcements to Mr. Rollins from Weber High. Thank you, Board President Ritchie. Superintendent Stevens, Assistant Superintendent Steve Cedar Holman Rasmussen and Board of Education gives me great pleasure to introduce these young men tonight. David White, David White, Max Lunt, and Taylor Lang make up three members of the FBLA club at Weber High School. As part of FBLA, they give service, but they also compete in a variety of events. And this year, these three men took on the event public service announcement. And in this event, they have to research, uh, form an objective, and present major findings and create a 30-second public service announcement to the judges, which goes along with the assigned topic that FBLA gives the nation every year. And this year, the topic hit especially home because we know cyberbullying is a big issue in schools. And so the topic this year was to develop a PSA that addresses the issue of student safety and protection with regard to cyberbullying. Um, these three at the state competition took first place. They actually scored perfect in the prelim round and the final round with all of their judges. Um, and they, along with 14 others, will be going to nationals this summer representing FBLA in Baltimore. So I'd like to turn the time over to David, Taylor, and Max for their PSA presentation. Hi, my name's David White. I'm Taylor Lang. And I'm Max Lunt. We are from Weber High School, and we have created this public service announcement about cyberbullying with special regard to protection and prevention for the students. Cyberbullying, at its most basic form, is the misuse of technology with the intent to hurt others, whether anonymous or not. Last year, the School Board of Utah released a statement that around 650,000 students are attending schools statewide. Of those students, 34% have admitted that they have been cyberbullied. That's an outrageous number of 221,000 students. That right there is the issue we are here to talk about today. It's on the rise, and that is another big issue. In the past three years alone, it has increased 2%. 2% may not seem like a big increase, but with a number of 650,000 students, that equates to 13,000 more people. Those are your friends, those are your neighbors, and most importantly, those are your family members. If you would like to turn your attention over to the corner, there is a poster that we put up in the comments during our lunches that says cyberbullying is. The students were free to come and express their feelings to us and on the poster about their feelings on cyberbullying. They just want it to stop. They don't like it. This is all just part of the process that we went through to create this public service announcement. Taylor's going to talk a little bit more about the process. So the process to actually make the video, we used the Nikon D5500 with a 55mm lens at a 1.8 aperture f-stop. Now that's a lot of words, but basically it just means that we were able to get a lot of blur in the background with high contrast and sharp angles. We do this so that way your eyes are able to focus on the subject that we're hoping that you see, and thereby you're able to get the message that we hope to get across to you. We also use a monotone to um, a color as a way to show conflict to resolution in the video. Now the inspiration behind the scenes we show that one in three students walking through the hallways, much as you'll see as the girl in the video, one in three, as I was saying, are affected by cyberbullying in their high school years. And again, like he was saying, this is your family, this is your friends. It's the ones that you truly care about and you don't want anything happening to. And so we'd like to show you that video now.
So at the beginning of the at the beginning of the video, a question was posed saying, if you wouldn't do it in person, why would you do it online? Kids these days, they don't like to have a big audience and they don't like to have all the people gather around them and seeing what they're trying to do. And so they'll try to hide behind their phones. And in some cases, they actually feel like they have more power by doing so because they don't get that personal note of seeing the person's face. And sometimes they'll feel guilt when they do that. This way, they feel next to no guilt in any way. So as you guys can see on your desk, we have a brochure that we made about cyberbullying. I'm going to walk you guys through that really quick. So if you turn to the front page, you're going to see the Safe Utah app. Now this is a great app that has been created by the University of Utah. That is a great way that students can go online and talk to a counselor anonymously. Now that's the big part about this, is kids, as Taylor said, don't like to accept the fact that they've been cyberbullied and they don't like confrontation with other people about it. Now if I can invite you guys, if you guys would like to pull out your phones really quick. There's QR codes on the bottom of this paper, and if you guys would like to at a time, you can scan this and it will go directly to the App Store and you can download the Safe Utah app. Now this is um, great so you can distribute the word about cyberbullying as well. If you go to the next page, it's talking about um, working with the app as well. Now there is um, figures at the top of the page and on the bottom kind of works you through it on the figures as well. The next page is talking about cyberbullying by the numbers. So the first one is talking about the mediums used. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, etc. All those different kind of social media platforms that students are being cyberbullied on. The bottom graph is talking about the use that have been either witnessed cyberbullying, been cyberbullied, or admitted to cyberbullying. And as you can see by those numbers, they're rising and they're pretty shocking. If you'll turn to the back page, it's talking about how to detect when one is being cyberbullied. This is a really hard topic that people don't really realize, of um, the, really the warning signs of seeing that students have been cyberbullied. Um, some really interesting ones, as I'm going to point out here, is the first one. Noticeable increases or decreases in a device use, including texting. Um, kind of those are just really warning signs to look out for. As well as another one is a child hides their screen or device when others are near or avoids discussion about what they're going on on their device. They don't like people to see it. They don't like the confrontation is a really big point, so we're hitting. Um, and if you turn to the back, that's our references page, and Dave and Taylor are going to continue to touch on that. All of the quotes that you have seen, whether it's been in the presentation, the video, or the brochure, have been created by us as a team. And from Jen Page, a counselor for 12 years at Weber High School who deals with many cyberbullying issues a week. Now, as for any of the music and on the back of the page, the music was actually stock music from the Final Cut Pro X, and so we didn't run into any copyright issues. And if you'd like to turn to the back of the page where we have our references, they each correspond from S1 through S6. Throughout the brochure, you'll see that these numbers pop up periodically, and this is our way to give credit where credit is due. That way you're able to find where we got our sources from. As, Dead say, as Dave said earlier in the um, presentation, 650,000 students are attending school statewide. Now, that 34% of students that have been cyberbullied is that huge number of 221,000 students. That is a large number, and it's still growing, as he said, by 2% over the past three years. Now, let's, let's take it home a little bit. Let's take it back here to Weber School District. There are over 31,000 students who are attending school here, as you guys know, and that means over 10,000 students are being cyberbullied here. That's a large number, as we said. That's your family. That's your friends. Those are students that we personally go to school with that we don't know are being cyberbullied walking through the school, uh, walking through the doors. And uh, we'd like to leave you with this challenge here as a great way, and that is to download the app, distribute the word, and to delete cyberbullying. Thank you so much for your time. And do you guys have any questions? Nice job, guys. You need to be commended. Uh, we will have the Pledge of Allegiance led by Maxwell Lund now. If you guys will stand up and join with me in um, saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. Guys, that's amazing. Thank you. We appreciate that. Mr. Rollins, nice job on leading them through that. Let's give him another hand. That's amazing. That should be a broadcast on the national television. 
I felt to uh, excuse board members Bruce uh, Jardine and uh, Janice Christensen. They are uh, not going to be with us this evening. Board, um, we need to move on. Our agenda would be the consent calendar. I would entertain a motion to accept the consent calendar. So moved by Doug. Mitzi, second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Number four, presentation of the STEM fair achievement. Matt Patterson. Board, Superintendent Stevens, thank you for the opportunity to, to stand and, and present some, uh, some amazing students today. And we'll turn the time over to them in just a minute here. But I wanted to kind of um, tell you a little about the, the, the STEM fair and, and the progress in this. And, and there's a uniqueness in the, the students that we've got today. So one of, one of our students is actually from Weber High, and one of them is actually from Fremont High. And they are actually a partner project. Um, and they actually presented their work together as partners. Which that in itself is unique. That's the very first time I've ever had um, two, two students from two opposing high schools work together collaboratively and then present their work. Secondly, their work is tremendous. Um, they're, the, what they're doing is uh, not only recognizable amongst fairs, but it is, well, I'm convinced, will be recognizable amongst um, the community as a large. Um, these these uh, the work they're doing is going to make an impact on society. And I'll let them, I won't steal their thunder of what they're going to do here in just a second. But um, but I really wanted to share and, and have these two present because it really encapsulates um, the work that has happened from, I think, all the way from kindergarten all the way up until their senior year. And these are seniors. And uh, the programs that exist in Weber School District and the opportunities for kids to to dive in, solve problems, develop, research, and, and present their work at the highest level. Um, they're going to talk about their work and what they've done, and um, I've been able to listen and, and participate with some university, even, even professional level research and work, and these, these students are at that level or beyond in terms of the professional level that they're, they're presenting, and it's, an exciting, um, it's exciting to listen to them and the work they've done. And so um, having students participate in STEM Fair and other opportunities um, like CT and uh, the, the Project Lead the Way program that these will mention is really an opportunity to help foster that type of learning experience. So I wanted to introduce you to, or you guys, to Lily and Mason. Lily is from Fremont and Mason is from Weaver and I'll let them tell about their project. Thank you, Mr. Patterson. Um, I'm Mason Palmer, and I'm from Weber. Yeah. And I'm Lily from Fremont, the better school. <laughs> That's not true, but anyways. Um, <laughs> so um, we started out our project first in in the senior level engineer, yeah, in engineering design and development, which is the senior level capstone class of the Project Lead the Way program. And uh, the whole point of that class is to find a real-world problem. And uh, the entire class is just one project. And it's going through the engineering process to solve that real-world world problem that you find. And so uh, we started looking for a problem. And I'll let Lively tell you about that. So we kind of found that it was actually really hard to find a problem that we wanted to spend an entire semester on. And so we actually spent a really long time looking and called a bunch of people. Um, I don't know if you guys remember the fires that were up on the mountain in the fall. Um, but when we had those going on, we were like, well, what if we did something to help firefighters? Because we wanted to do something that was worth our time and that could maybe eventually um, make a difference. Um, and so what we ended up doing is we found out about a problem called fuel geysering and the chainsaws that the firefighters use. Um, and it can happen in any small motor system. And what we ended up doing is we redesigned the fuel cap that is supposed to relieve the pressure in the tank without allowing fuel to spray out. I'll let Mason explain it. Okay, so this is the, the first design we had of the new fuel cap. Um, how it works is the first half inch of a turn causes the cap top to raise from the bottom of the cap, opening up this hole in the bottom, which allows a 
pathway for pressure inside the tank to be safely vented out through these top holes and you guys can look at that yeah that's just that's where you would simp you would screw it into the tank okay so after a project lead the way um, first we had started with some simulated geyser tests with baking soda and vinegar and then eventually when we were done um, we kind of found out about the science fair and were able to continue our testing and eventually we moved on to gasoline so like Mason said um, we started out with that cap but we don't actually have our gasoline cap with us um, but it's made out of a different material called so it's nylon and that's what we tested with and the cap is a little bit less bulky yeah, we had to switch to the new nylon cap for a couple of reasons. One, we had to redesign it to fit on new fuel tanks for testing, and then also um, the gasoline would have eaten up that plastic that that cap's made of. And we actually had some problems earlier in testing because that cap is very porous, and we didn't know that, so it let the pressure out and wouldn't seal. But this new... 3D printed nylon cap was from a print shop in Cal Colorado that had a printer um, nice enough to print it densely enough and out of the nylon material so we could test with it. Um, what else should we say? So we original we designed it in Autodesk Inventor, um, which is a 3D modeling program by Autodesk, and that plastic is ABS plastic, yeah. right? Yeah, it's ABS plastic, and then we had to switch over to the nylon plastic. And that the reason why we got it from a print shop in Colorado is because that was the closest place that had a printer nice enough to print out of that material. So we needed it to be printed more dense and also out of the other kind of plastic or material. Yeah. And so um, somewhere along the line, I don't remember exactly when, but um, we've been talking to a lot of different people. And, you know, we've been used to bringing up our project while we talk because we kind of like to brag about it. And so <laughs> um, I was actually um, helping my lacrosse coach run a camp and uh, started talking to him about my our project and he he was like yeah I know what fuel guys ring is and we were like wait a second not, not many people know and that we've talked to at least and so then I was like well how do you know and he's like well I uh, I work for the forest service and I um, just looked at a case the other day where a firefighter actually got severe burns and stuff and hospitalized for a while because of the fuel geysering incident. And so he's like, yeah, your project sounds really cool. Um, let me talk to some other people. And a little bit later, he said, um, Ralph Gonzalez, the head of the issue of fuel geysering in Washington, um, in Washington, D.C., yeah, uh, <laughs> wanted our email to, you know, start correspondence to talk about our project and stuff. And so we've started talking to them and uh, uh, talk. What a, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can. So we ended up meeting with them. And so that was kind of cool. We did it through a video chat and they've um, offered to help us out and they've given us some information that they had. And so that was a really cool experience. And so even after the science fair, we're wanting to continue it because um, we think that that would be really cool if eventually our cap could be implemented um, in actual fuel tanks. Um, I know it's something that we really, really enjoy. And um, because we only have five minutes, we're not going super in depth. But if you guys have any extra questions about anything specific, we would love to answer them. Oh, that's our science fair poster from... 
Yeah, we can. We'll have a science fair poster that's updated by Wednesday next week that will have all of our new data on it. If you wanted to wait, we could send you that. That'll be our international science fair poster. Okay. Thank you guys for your time. So, like I said, I didn't, we didn't give them a ton of time, but you can notice their board here. It is, it is tremendous. And the, the work they've done between now and their, their newest version is, is even more impressive. Um, their board, their, these two will be traveling to the International Science Fair in Pittsburgh. Uh, we'll leave on the, on the 12th of May, and uh, they'll have a chance to, to present their work um, with 1,500 other students from 78 countries from around the world. Um, and we really fully um, expect that these, these two students will do tremendously well at that, that fair. Um, I know that they're exploring options of patents and, and other opportunities, and uh, this is just a, a great example of, of the byproduct of great programs and, and great teachers and mentors um, in Weber School District. So thank you so much, Board, for allowing us to celebrate two more students tonight. So. Thank you very much, Mr. Patterson. Thank you, you two. Good luck. Be safe and uh, represent us well and come back with the uh, first place. <laughs> Thanks, same to you. Uh, recognitions. Uh, Teacher of the Year for 2018, Art Hansen, please. Wow, our, our future is in good hands with uh, young minds like that. That's impressive. Well, uh, Board, Superintendent Stevens, it's my great pleasure to present this year's Teacher of the Year for Weber School District. If I could have Jeff Jackson come up here as I talk about J Jeff, I want you to uh, see him in person. What an amazing teacher, uh, incredible. I mean, we have such amazing teachers throughout the district and as a committee getting together and trying to select one is really, really, really difficult. But I, I think after you hear some of the things that the impact that Jeff has had, not only on his students, but at Teach Bill uh, Junior High School, on the district and even at the state level, uh, he, his influence is so wide-ranging that uh, it, it's unbelievable. I had the opportunity last Friday to join uh, Superintendent Stevens and a large group of district representatives as we went into Jeff's classroom as we announced to him and to his class that uh, he had won this prestigious award and the hands were flying up when, when uh, Superintendent Stevens said, can you tell us if we made the right selection? And everyone wanted to say something, and they did. It was, it was really inspiring, um, of just the in, impact he's had. Just uh, next slide here. Just a few of his accomplishments and things that he's involved in. Uh, Jeff was chosen uh, for uh, the state's Utah uh, World Language Teacher of the Year back in 2012. So he's... Um, esteemed through, by his colleagues throughout the state as one of the leading uh, world language teachers. Um, he's the district world language facilitator, so any, any world language teacher, if they want to present something, they always go through, through Jeff. He's the district German immersion summer camp uh, committee lead. He's the one that uh, organizes the German, uh, uh, the German camp. Uh, it's a a language immersion program up at the environmental center where he spends what four days or five five days only speaking German that's all they do all day and all night and they stay up there and um, he's just the spearhead behind that he's also involved in the the German festival here in Ogden the Hof, uh, winter fest that they have each year and he organizes all the schools taking kids out to experience that in a field trip uh, that Friday morning where they get to dance and eat food and, and do all kinds of fun activities. Um, he helped write the World Language um, Corps for the, for the state. Uh, earlier this year, he, he and his team uh, received the uh, E-plus team award for their Minuteman Corps Academy. And uh, some great work that three teachers organized to, to help uh, some struggling kids be successful in their core classes. And, and together with these three teachers, they, 
they have taken on kids that haven't been successful any other time in their, their academic life, and their whole goal is to keep these kids on track to grad, to, for graduation as they enter Bonneville High School. So just a few of his many accomplishments, as you see, he's influencing uh, the school, the district, and the state, and uh, just an impact in so many areas. Um, next slide. So what are, what, this was the hard part. I, you know, I was there Friday as they did that, and I was listening to what people were saying. I went back again and spent about three hours and into different classes, and, and even some, I talked to some of your kids from your math class as well. Um, and then staff members, and <laughs> it, it was just amazing how much they revere uh, Jeff. And I just wanted to, to well, let's start hearing what the kids have to say. Well, we have a little, a little one here, Alex. Okay, um, then I, I asked a few other kids, let's listen to what they had to say. Isaac said, he has that good balance. Now, and see if you can hear a theme in, in these kids, because they all speak um, to the same things. Isaac said, he has that good balance, being fun while still being strict. He has the rules, and he needs you to follow them so everyone can have fun and everyone can learn. He has kids in his class that behave even when they don't behave in other teachers' classes. He doesn't make anyone feel stupid. He makes everyone feel like they are doing well and improving. It's so much fun having him as my teacher. Uh, Kelly said, Hair, hair means mister, okay? Hair Jackson makes everyone feel included. He is great in getting all to participate and, and get involved. What I like about Hair Jackson is, he doesn't just give you assignments. He makes the assignment fun and makes you want to learn German. And I, I, I failed to mention right out of the gate, he is both a German and a math teacher. Okay? So he, he teaches both equally with passion. And, and Alex was in his math class. Um, some of these are from his, his German class. Okay, he says, uh, Anna says, he takes the time to stop and help people really understand if they are confused. He really, he's really nice. He's my favorite teacher. Logan said, he's really positive and energetic. He makes things really clear. If a student has a problem, he takes the time to really help. His assignments are fun and they work. And, and when we were in there talking uh, to the kids, Jeff said, now did... did did they pay you to, to say all these nice things about me? <laughs> and they, these, these are kids that just volunteered, volunteered this. And some, in that day, in that class, uh, one student said, he's always there for us. We can always go to him when we are having troubles, not just in school, but if we're having troubles at home. I, I, another student says, I don't have to go up to him and ask what I'm missing. He comes to me with a big packet so I can learn it. And, and finally, another student said, he makes it fun. It's a good atmosphere. I always feel safe in here. And that's what every parent wants uh, of, a, of a teacher. And, and it's fantastic. Now let's hear what some of your colleagues had to say. See if they felt the same way. Karen Royland said, he cares about his students so much. It comes through in everything he says, in faculty meetings or in small group meetings. He cares about each student and how they are doing in school not only academics, but in their emotional well-being. He presented the idea to administration faculty that we can, by changing a few things we do in the classroom, really make a difference in those kids' lives that have never experienced academic success so they can be successful by working with us. His passion is really what carries us through. Even when I say, oh, these kids, he, he will say, yes, these kids. Uh, uh, John Richards, a counselor there, um, he, he said, I think the best word to describe Jeff is present, not only because he is always there for someone in need, but he's truly a gift to his students, colleagues, and the community. 
I have known Jeff for over 15 years, first as a parent and then as a colleague. I have never heard a negative word come from him. He is always encouraging students to do their best. He does the same for his colleagues here at TH Bell. When Jeff enters a room, there is a flow of positive energy that comes with him. He truly brightens the room simply with his presence. Hardly a day goes by when there aren't current and former students in his classroom after school getting help with German, math, or personal problems. It is inspiring to see the dedication and energy that Jeff has for the profession of education. Powerful words from um, and some of his administrators. Uh, this one from Nicole Warren Doman. He sees his role as head of the classroom as as more than just the, the disseminator of knowledge, Jeff deeply understands that he is in a position of influence with the students in his classroom. He dedicates himself to improving his craft. He works hard to connect with all students. Um, he ensures meaningful student engagement in the content by executing well-planned lessons and activities. He is a master at finding the good in all students and then building on that good step by step until success is achieved. Um, and she goes on to say many other things. I've got lots of quotes from people. But we're going to finish up with uh, Principal Len Ward. And uh, he's going to tell you why he nominated Jeff as this year's Teacher of the Year. It starts way before the students uh, get to school. Uh, he's here before 6, or right about 6. Uh, he beats the custodians here. He comes through the cafeteria door. And he is well prepared to help each and every student as they enter his, his, his classroom. He uh, greets them every day at the door. Um, he uh, makes every kid feel like they're the most important kid in his class. And every student believes that they're the most important kid in their class. And uh, that goes a long way. Uh, he, he just provides, uh, prepares well thought out lessons that cover the core. And he helps students understand the standards and the concepts that they need to learn. That's pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. <laughs> and I have to personally say, ich gratuliere dir, und ich bin sehr stolz auf dich, mein Freund. Vielen Dank. <laughs> but um, let's join me in congratulating and giving a big hand to Jeff Jackson, our teacher of the year. Thank you so much. Um, what a wonderful, wonderful honor. Um, I'd like to introduce my favorite teacher, Camille Jackson, my wife, <laughs> right here. Uh, she is a, an amazing teacher in our home and in her classroom, and I just learned so much from her. And uh, I think about, and this is my neighbor, my good neighbor, Jill story and and uh, my daughter Katie and her husband Hayden and and Daniel and and my my stepmother Holly so good to have her and and Matthew they're all there in a row thank you for sitting together so <laughs> um, what a great honor teaching is the the opportunity that we have to really connect with the world to really connect through through the kids we teach. I love every moment that I can work with my kids, with my students. And I'm so excited for them. You see these students that came up, that's the, that's the, the blessing of teaching, is to see them succeed like that. And uh, thank you so much.
So if I could, um, for our classified and as our teacher of the year, those nominated as well in all the categories will have a dinner honoring them. Um, and that is taken care of by Tony Devino, a donation from him as well as our uh, Weber School District Foundation. So um, we want to thank everybody. And so the nominations also get a little reward. So thank you. And we thank the, the foundation as well as Tony Devino. So uh, that's a nice partnership. And so we'll go to the next uh, Weber School District uh, Award, which is the Classified Employee of the Year for 2018. Kevin Cedarholm, please. Superintendent Stevens, Board of Education, it is my great honor to announce the 2018 Classified Employee of the Year, Les Meyerhofer. Would you come join me? Like the Teacher of the Year, there were many qualified applicants um, for this award. And uh, after going through all of them, I think you'll, you'll find that we picked the right person. Great people, but it's been a pleasure to work with Les, and I want to tell you just a little bit about him. If you really want to know the pulse of a school, you go to the secretaries. And so I went and talked to Mrs. Isaacson and Mrs. Shaw, and these are some of the comments that they said about Les. Said that he goes the extra mile to take care of everyone, completes any task, even those that are not in his job description. We'll talk about a few of those. <clears throat> in the winter, he loses sleep to get over early so that he can remove snow. Mrs. Shaw said the building always looks spotless. He makes you proud to work in such a great atmosphere and he always has a positive attitude. Went and talked to a few of the students, and it's interesting to hear the comments um, as they talk about Mr. Meyerhofer. Mr. Meyerhofer always keeps the school clean and safe for all students. Our school always looks clean and great because of the way he does his job. He knows exactly what to do when something goes wrong. He is a great and friendly janitor, and we love and appreciate him and the last one I liked, especially, well, I don't know about like, but I think you relate to it. He helps us with everything we need, even if it is our lockers or cleaning up throw up. <laughs> Too, often. Too often, that's right. The letter from Miss Ernest um, is a wonderful letter, and I'm going to read just a, a bit of it. But to highlight a few of the things that she said is that he's very hardworking, dedicated, never complains. He makes himself available to everyone. He's friendly with students and staff, Sting, stays longer if he needs to. And I want to read just one paragraph from this letter because I think it exemplifies uh, who Les Meyerhofer is. Since he is constantly out and about, our, stu our students know who he is and are quick to respond to his requests. This year, Les had one of our severe unit students as his aide, first period, and he taught this young man not only work skills, but how to have good conversations on how to fix machinery. Les is a great role model and took this student under his care. Les also has a great rapport with our faculty, is professional in his dealings with everyone, and goes out of his way to help those who need extra assistance. An example of this path is this past winter. While out plowing snow, one of our older teachers arrived and he plowed a path from her car to the sidewalk. He put ice melt down for her so she wouldn't slip, then went back to plowing the rest of the sidewalk. Les has been a great help to everyone at Orion. And in 27 years, and this is a lot from Miss Ernst, because she's, she's been in education a long time, says he's the best custodian she's ever had. I've, I've got to know Les quite a bit, and part of the reason is because not only is he such a great custodian at his school, but he's so involved, and I hope I have all of them. I probably don't, Les. This is probably not all of the things that he's involved in. But you're in the presidency, right, of the Utah School Employees Association. He's on the insurance committee, the custodial part of it, the insurance committee, the catastrophic committee. He's a representative for our negotiation committee. 
And every year we always have our new, ter new teacher orientation at Orion Junior High, and he always has that place spotless, no matter what meeting we ever held, hold there. So board, superintendent, I'd like to present to you the 2018 Classified Employee of the Year, Les Meyerhofer. Well, I'm a man of few words, uh, and so I just like to thank my administration, uh, thank my family, and uh, especially my wife, uh, uh, my, my kids, and everybody. That's it. Thank you. I don't know. Like I said, talk to me about hunting, and we can talk for hours. Oh, great. Thank you. Now we get to do our Weber School District First Year Teaching Award. Cami Alexander, please. Board, Superintendent, it is an absolute honor to talk about an amazing gal tonight. You're going to be in a little cuteness overload. I'm going to just tell you that right now. Because this gal's not only awesome, but she teaches kindergarten, and that makes them awesomer. Um, kindergarten is, kindergarten teachers are a special breed. They are the child's first experience and they make it amazing. If you walk up to a kindergarten student and ask them to draw a self-portrait, they'll do it and they'll be proud of it and they'll say, look what I did. You go up and ask a sixth grade student to draw a self-portrait and they'll say, I can't do that. Kindergarten kids have the world at their door. And so it's with great honor I present Jody Swenson as the first year teacher award for elementary education. Jody, come on up. <laughs> Jody wanted me to go for about 20 minutes tonight, but I told her we only had a few. <laughs> um, can you go to the next slide? This is what some of your colleagues said about you, Jody. 
Um, and I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, patience should probably be at the top of the list because when you teach kindergarten, that's big. Um, she is a very dedicated person. When I met Jody, uh, she was a student teacher. And I immediately thought, we got to have her. So we offered Jody an open contract, not knowing where we'd place her. She's landed in a great spot. And can I just say, she has been an amazing addition to Majestic Elementary. Am I right, Dave? Yep. Um, they weren't sure how to say, go get her. <laughs> so I just put, go get her. Because the way they describe Jody is the kind of person that doesn't wait for something to come up. She's looking for something to do and a way to help and a way to improve all the time. And the last quote was, we just love her. So next slide. Um, we had the opportunity to go visit Mrs. Swenson's kindergarten classroom. And um, it was fun. They were doing a little project. And I noticed right away that uh, in your classroom, while they were doing this little project, they had some music playing in the background, hence the reason I brought my phone. Um, and it happened to be from the movie The Greatest Showman. And so uh, that's one of my favorite soundtracks. And also playing was one of my favorite songs. And you probably didn't even realize what was playing, but I did right away. And it was called A Million Dreams. This song epitomizes, sorry, what happens in a kindergarten classroom. I can cry because she's crying in that picture right there, but these kids walk into our doors with a million dreams. And this lady right here makes them come true. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You were supposed to bring me tissues this time. but So let me just read um, four lines. I think of what the world could be. A vision of the one I see. A million dreams is all it's going to take. A million dreams for the world we're going to make. Wow, that's embarrassing. Sorry. <laughs> I love this girl. She's awesome. So... I want to play a clip for you. If you'll go to the next one, Trent. This was um, Superintendent Stevens introducing the fact that, hey, guess who's going to get this amazing award? And um, of course they knew. <laughs> so will you play this clip for us, Trent, because it's pretty cool. And yes, she's crying in the video. <laughs> See? They got it right. They didn't, they didn't say Mr. Wallace or anything. <laughs> so, so she was making a million dreams come true that day. And I could tell by the way her students spoke about her. If you'll go to the next slide. Um, Superintendent Stevens asked them, you know, what do you, what do you love about your teacher? Another thing that kindergarten kids will readily tell you and sixth grade kids won't. But let's play this little clip about what her kiddos had to say about her. The greatest. She's awesome. That sums it up. What's your name? Tell me why you love me. She's the greatest. So 
I thought it was pretty awesome that we were playing the greatest show, the greatest showman, and now we have the greatest teacher. So, um, but I don't know if you caught what that second little gal said. She said she loves us. Good teachers make every student believe they're the coolest. And every kid in that classroom felt like they were the coolest. So, do you want to go to the next one, please? I want to congratulate Jody. I want to thank her for her hard work. You would never know she's a first-year teacher. She simply is the greatest. Congratulations. Now I'm going to do all the crying. Um, it's it's great. Like, so my husband Kent is here. Sorry. <laughs> and my sweet sister Kiwi. And Ann Warner, who I had the immense privilege to student teach with. She taught me a lot of what I know. And sweet Sandy, who's one of our secretaries. Just means the world that they would come with me. Um, if you want your heart melted, come to my class. We'll turn on The Greatest Showman, and you will get a chorus of singing from those cute little kindergartners. Every time they start to sing, I swear I have to get a tissue. It's just the cutest thing. You know, I thought, I'll teach, and there are certain things I have to teach, and I want to teach my kids to be hard workers, and I want to teach them that they're important and that they're loved and that they can do really hard things. And ironically, those are all the things they have taught me. And I'm just so grateful that Dave gave me the opportunity to be a kindergarten teacher. And I wanna thank the board and the superintendency as well. Thank you. Thanks, Cammy. What a great night, huh? Let's keep going. So, now we get to have the uh, first year teaching award by Mr. Billy Grills. Thank you, Superintendent Board. It is an honor for me to introduce to you Jacqueline Hewitt. Jacqueline, will you please come up? Now, Jacqueline's also from TH Bell, and Jeff, you are one of my students, and I love you. But her kid said she was the best thing in TH Bell. So I, it's a t I, I think it's a tie. Good. Hey, I, I want to start a little different. I'm going to start with a letter your assistant, super, uh, uh, your assistant principal wrote, okay? So it says, this is from Ms. Doman. Almost everyone can remember one teacher, one coach, one mentor in our lives that made a lasting difference. That caring adult that saw something in us that made us feel like we had something important to contribute to the world. For that, <clears throat> I'm sorry, <clears throat> for students that have worked with Ms. Heward, she is that teacher, coach, mentor. As I have worked with students this year, her name has come up more times than I can count. Students trust her, want to work with her because they know she cares and students will go <clears throat> with her to complete anything they need to. Uh, Jacqueline creates the most incredible, 
challenging, complex, cross-curricular, in-depth projects and lessons for her students. And it is amazing to see the students beam with pride as their work is displayed throughout the school. But Jacqueline's superpower is that she cares about, connects with, and convinces every student she meets that they are important, wanted, and welcome. That's awesome. <clears throat> so I, I wanted to start with that because as we talk to kids, and you'll see a couple videos, it, it was evident. Uh, when we walked into her room last Friday as well, the kids were on task, music was on, they were working, and you could tell every one of those kids truly knew they were cared about. Um, Mrs. Hewitt makes my day. These are some quotes from some of her students. She helps me understand. She is super nice. She helps me with inspiration. Go ahead, Trent. And then when I went back Monday and talked with Jacqueline, I said, Jacqueline, tell me some things that have stuck out for you this year. She said, teaching has been more rewarding than I ever thought it would be. She says, I have felt very supported all year by both the staff in the school and the, and the district. They have helped me grow. And this was really cool. She said, the building of relationships with students has exceeded all my expectations. And um, Jacqueline, that is so very true. You have done a great job. The kids love you. And Trent, if you'll go to the, the next. These are, we had four or five videos. These are just two kids we pulled out while we were there. Uh, so turn that up, Trent. It, it's not the greatest, but I hope we can hear all these. <laughs> Is there one more there, Trent? Now, this kid, hold on, Trent. This kid is, he's got some struggles, and, he's, and he states that. But he says, you make a difference in his life every day. And he didn't know if he could come to school if, it, if he didn't have you every day, Jacqueline. This was very powerful. I was able to talk to him after class as well, and again, he says you are what makes him come to school each day. So superintendent, board, everybody here tonight, our first year secondary uh, teacher of the year, Jacqueline Hewitt. They said I didn't have to speak, but okay. Thank you, Jody, for crying because now I don't feel so stupid. <laughs> um, I just want to share my biggest fans. I got my cute old husband, Colton, um, Mr. Meyerhofer. Don't talk to him. He'll talk your ear off about hunting. We'll be here all night. <laughs> um, I have my sweet parents, John and Judy Parsons, and my... Bonus parents, Michelle and Gary Heward, and I mean, I, I just love my job, and I, I never, I, I just like it said, like it has exceeded all of my expectations, and the students are what makes my job worth it, and what makes my day every day, or sometimes you know it makes a hard day, but then you see them again the next day, and. It just makes it all worth it, and I work alongside, like, the best people <laughs> in the district, obviously. I mean, it's an honor to work next to Jeff and learn from him, and just, I want to be just like him. And the greatest uh, staff and faculty that are so supportive, and even when it's just, I need a shoulder to cry on, or I, I need a Dr. Pepper, and she comes and brings it to me, and <laughs> it's great. And I just, I love my job, and I, I the students are everything, so.
Gosh, that was fun. It's fun to find out that even though she was at Roy for one year, she taught her for that year. That's great. Of course, Mr. Oborn taught me at Roy High, too. Uh, let's move on. Discussion and action items. Administrative appointments for 20... Where? Oh, we ought to probably do the one that's... This is, this is a special one. So, this is a Canyon View Elementary Award for our Special Ed First Year Teacher of the Award. Jane Ann Kemmeyer, please. This is so much fun for me to be able to present this First Year Teacher Award. As you know, we've heard about elementary and secondary, and now we have our Special Education First Year Teacher Award. Josh Cousins, would you please come up with me? I'm so excited to talk about you for a minute. <laughs> so much fun. Um, you know, as the, the person that's kind of walking out the door and getting ready to retire here, it's so much fun to present someone who's just starting their career. And I have to tell you, you've made a wonderful choice in Weaver School District. So um, I'm excited for him and his very successful beginning to his career. Um, Josh is is a teacher at Canyon View. Can I have you go to the next slide, please? He is a teacher at Canyon View in the with the secondary team. And that's a group of, he has three other colleagues that he works with, and they work with students from seventh grade through 12th grade. And these are students with significant social behavior needs. So that is a challenging thing to take on as a first year teacher. It's a hard job for someone with lots of experience. And Josh just stepped in and is doing a fabulous job in his first year of teaching. Um, his principal, Jennifer Warren, has a few very nice things to say about him. She says that Josh brought a fresh perspective and personal background to the program, understanding the needs to develop relationships while nurturing a safe environment for our students, grades 7 through 12. He knows the importance of creating relevant and meaningful activities, critical to increase students' learning and the core content and increasing students in their lives. So, you know, it, I think it's fabulous that a brand new teacher already has figured out things that we've been talking to teachers for a long time about relationships and relevance. And it was fun to read about that um, and your teaching as well. Um, and I'm going to say a couple more things that Josh has felt before we move to student comments. Because um, as we were waiting to go into your classroom, your principal came over and she was so energetic and fun to to hear her talk about you. And the same things that are right here in this letter that she wrote in to nominate you, but the things that she said were that Josh had lots of opportunities. In fact, I think that you at first wanted to teach at a high school so you could coach as well. Is that correct? But then this opportunity came along and we're so pleased that he took this. And Josh's words were something like this. Josh recognizes that a teacher has a great impact on the life of a student anywhere, but that at Canyon View, the impact can be significantly greater, and that he wants to be that kind of teacher. I think that's a wonderful statement, and you are that kind of teacher, because we're going to look at your students' comments, and they're a little different than the kindergarten kids, aren't they? <laughs> but nonetheless, they speak of the admiration that they have for this young, wonderful young man. Can we go to the next slide? So, Dr. Stevens again, and I actually did it because I was, I, was, I was challenged, so you're going to see why I was, you know, someone said, oh, do you dare do that? Mm, okay. <laughs> it's a quote. It's a quote. Okay, here we go. What makes him great? Well, students say it all. Here we go. He doesn't like yelling. He never is a piss, in a pissy mood. So there you go. Those are from the mouths of, of babes. He's never in a pissy mood. And what was really funny is that Dr. Stevens repeated it. So. <laughs> he makes learning fun. And he does that by talking to the students as he's teaching. He stops and has conversations along the way. And I think that's a wonderful thing that he helps kids understand and enjoy the learning process. Um, he is always willing to help us and willing to give us space. 
You think about this, the students that he's working with, and they need that space, and Josh understands that, and giving them the time that they need to reach that understanding. Um, he is, okay, this was a touching one, and this was one of the, to me, this was just amazing. He said, he is the nicest teacher in any school. I've been in any school that I've ever been in. He said, he really stressed that this is the nicest teacher from any school that I've ever been in. And then he added, and I've been in a lot of schools. So, when we, let's go to the next slide. Josh, we want to congratulate you. Now, you notice I didn't use a lot of videos. There's some privacy issues that we have with our special needs students. So I just want to tell Josh, and I hope he'll help with me. Thank you for choosing Weber School District. Thank you for choosing special education. And thank you for caring so much about students and helping them know how much you care about them. Will you join me in thanking Josh? Thank you. Um, I just want to thank the people that are here. Uh, first, my principal, uh, Jennifer Warren. She's back there. Uh, also, uh, the teacher that I student taught with, uh, Kenna Brown in the back. And then uh, Kathy Birch, she was the one that kind of said, you know what, come to Utah. I was up in Rexburg trying to finish my school. She said, just come down here. Your mountains, you got jazz games, you got good restaurants. And I was like, <laughs> we'll try it. <laughs> So, and then, uh, my wife and son, <laughs> I appreciate the support they give me. <laughs> um, and I just, I love the, I love my students, I don't know, <laughs> don't tell them I'm crying. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, they, I will go. It'll be a long 17 days <laughs> if they know this. Um, but, but really, uh, I do, my students, they, they struggle with a lot of things, and I just want the hour that they're with me to, to be kind of enjoyable um, and try to get some, a little bit of math in there. So there we go. <laughs> I apologize, Josh. I really didn't mean to cut you short and not uh, not include you, but we're done. Thank you. Congratulations to all the first year teaching award people. Thank you very, very much. Also, I'd just like to take a minute and thank staff for their uh, effort and work on trying to uh, find the best. That's that's a challenge. We have great, great employees at our school schools and they care about kids and, and we know that and we thank them and it starts at the top down so thanks superintendent on down board um, we have some action items we need to move through and the first would be administrative appointments for the school year 2018 2019 superintendent stevens please thank you president richie as you know board members last month we uh 
completed a lot of our administrative moves, but some of those moves created some domino effect. Um, and so I'd like to uh, just finish up with a few additional administrative moves. Um, we'll begin with kind of a quick um, uh, uh, run through in terms of uh, appointments and uh, promotions, if you will, and call for a motion to approve those. And then we'll circle back and let you uh, meet these great individuals. So from junior high assistant principal to curriculum specialist, Ben Prawl, from school reading specialist to curriculum specialist, Christy Wagner, from secondary intern to junior high assistant principal, Niels Hansen, and new interns at the secondary level, Mike Brown, and at the elementary level, Heather Hells, and would uh, ask for a motion for those advancements. Thank you, Superintendent. Board, you've uh, heard a presentation and names on the administrative appointments. I'd entertain a motion. So, Paul, second by Dean. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Superintendent, please. Great. Let's meet these uh, wonderful educators. I'll begin with Ben Prawl. Ben, come on up. And as you're coming up, I just want to share a couple of things with the board uh, about you, your background. Ben has a bachelor's degree with double major in psychology and chemistry, a master of education in curriculum and instruction from Weber State, and his administrative license from Western Governors. Ben's got 10 years in education, six in Davis, four in Weber. Uh, ben has taught seventh and eighth grade science, organic chemistry, honors chemistry, and AP chemistry. Right now, Ben is assistant principal at Orion Junior High School. Ben and his wife, Christy, have three and a half kids, but the, 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 the last one is Closer to nine tenths. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's due any day now, right? Yeah, I'd like to excuse my wife for that reason. She's okay. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Superintendent Stevens. Thank you, Board, for um, uh, allowing me this opportunity. I'm excited to uh, to share my passion and love for science. I, I, I love science. And I love uh, working with kids that uh, and helping them have that love as well and helping them see what they can accomplish and helping teachers in that path. Um, I'm grateful for the mentors I've, I've had. I'm grateful for the opportunity I've had to work with Chris Ernest this last year and and uh, my administration at Roy the year previous year, and Matt Patterson's been a great mentor to me as well, and I know I have big shoes to fill in replacing him, but I'm looking forward to the opportunity, and I'm grateful for it. Thank you. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> Christy Wagner, uh, with Becky's appointment as principal at North Park Elementary, uh, we've appointed Christy Wagner as the curriculum specialist, uh, Christy has a bachelor's in elementary education with concentrations in both special education and early childhood from Weber State. She has her master's in reading and literacy from Walden University. Uh, Christy has also earned both her level one and level two reading endorsements from the State Office of Education. She has her administrative endorsement from Utah State. Christy has spent 12 years in education, all in Weber School District. She taught fifth grade at Bates Elementary School and has been the reading specialist at Far West Elementary for the past three years. Uh, Christy and her husband, Brett, have four children and three grandchildren. Hi, thank you, Superintendent and Board. I am so excited for this opportunity. And um, I, English language arts is my passion and I love it. And I am so excited to work with teachers. I have to thank a couple of people. First off, um, Assistant Superintendent Cedar Home. He was the first person to put me on a leadership path. He um, gave me some opportunities that put me on this path, so I'm grateful for him. And then, of course, Becky Oki has been my, my mentor and my friend for the past five years, so I appreciate her. I'm so excited to um, still be a part of the reading and um, I look forward to working with her still and getting some help from her. <laughs> She's amazing. She's done a great job, and it makes me um, feel comfortable to step in because she's done such a great job organizing and getting things ready. I'm super excited to work with the curriculum department, and um, I want to thank my husband. He's my rock and my cheerleader, and my parents who taught me how to work hard and serve, and I've got my, my kids and my grandkids with me, then they're my joy. So thanks for this opportunity. Thanks,
<laughs> you know, board, in some of these positions, if you look back uh, on the history of Weaver education, there have been dozens and dozens who have held those positions, but with district reading specialist, Christie is only the third. Uh, Sue Porter was the very first. Uh, Becky uh, just uh, took that ball from Sue and took us to another level, and, and now Christy. Uh, with Ben's promotion in uh, the curriculum department, that creates an opening at Orion, and we've uh, recommended that Niels Hansen, who's currently a, an intern at Fremont High School, be appointed as the assistant principal at uh, Orion. Niels has his bachelor uh, degree from in music from Weber State and also a Master of Education and Instructional Leadership from Utah State. Niels has been in education for 14 years. He taught band, orchestra, guitar, percussion, and jazz. Uh, and as I mentioned, he's currently an intern at Fremont High School. Niels and his wife Tara have three children. Thank you. Thank you, board. Thank you, superintendent. My wife told me I'm not supposed to talk very long. But I'm so grateful for Tara because she has been a huge support. We still have young kids at home. We have twins that are six in kindergarten. And she, I'm gone a lot, and she never complains, and I appreciate her. Um, it's hard to leave Fremont. I've only been there a year, but I've made some deep connections. I've worked with the best people possible, um, Michelle Perry. Our principal, I've always admired her. I'm grateful for her um, help this year. I go to her a lot with questions. <laughs> Probably still call, but that's okay. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I'm super excited to move on and, uh, and to become a Titan and to work with Matt over here at Orion. So thank you very much, appreciate it. Welcome, Michelle. It's great to have you, and Niels, you have had a great mentor in Michelle. Uh, with Niels uh, moving from Fremont, that leaves an opening for an intern at uh, Fremont, and we've recommended Mike Brown. Mike, come on up. Mike has his associate degree in criminal justice from Weaver State and a bachelor's degree in integrated studies with an emphasis in criminal justice, ethnic studies, and English from Weaver State University. Mike's master's degree is in educational counseling from the University of Phoenix, as well as his administrative certificate. Uh, Mike has been in education for 10 years, um, and prior to that, 11 years uh, with the State of Utah Juvenile Justice Service Program. So you just missed Judge Hewer just a moment yes. ago, right? She actually was one of my professors a long time. So. <clears throat> uh, Mike has been a school counselor at Walquist and Roy High School. He's married and has two children. Mike, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent uh, Jeff Stevens and the school board. I, I really appreciate this opportunity, and I won't disappoint you. Thank you so much. Um, this is difficult because you're making me follow kindergarten, so that's tough. I mean, um, I, I know I look like a rookie with my little cheat sheet here, but I want to make sure I don't forget anybody. Um, Mr. Art Hansen and Bill Grills, thank you for uh, your constant mentoring and always leading by example. I appreciate everything that you guys have done for me. Um, my wife's going to kill me because she hates this kind of stuff. She hates being the center of attention, but my beautiful wife, Michelle Ron and Camp Brown, um, who has always supported me and believed in me in times when I didn't believe in myself. I really appreciate that. Thank you, and I love you. Um, my mom, Lynn Brown, my dad, Mike Brown, he's a Green Bay Packers fan too, so please don't hold that against him. Um, thank you for always being there for me no matter what. Um, you guys have always taught me the true meaning of genuinely caring for others and following my dreams, so thank you. I love you guys. Um, I will be quick. Michelle Perry, haven't had a chance to talk to you yet. Thank you so much for the opportunity to go back to Fremont to work in that cone. Um, I was at Walquist for five years, and I know a lot of the families. I know it's a great place to be, um, a great community. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and certainly not, uh, last but not least, I have a lot of mentors 
throughout the 10 years. Um, I'm looking and seeing some of them here, too many to name, but I love you guys. Thank you so much. You know who you are. I appreciate it. Thank you. Finally, board, uh, due to the fact that in 20. 1920, we're going to open a couple of new elementary schools and, and may see a couple of retirements. We have need for an additional elementary intern, and we recommend Heather Hells. Heather, come on up. <clears throat> Heather, Heather has her bachelor's and master's of education degrees from Weber State University and her administrative license from Utah State University. Heather has uh, spent 18 years in education. Um, she's also served as the Weber State Alumni President and on the Board of Directors uh, uh, at, at Weber State. Heather has taught first, second, third, and fifth grades. Currently, she's at H. Guy Child. I've had a chance to be in Heather's classroom, and she is a master teacher. Uh, Heather reminded me that her mother, Donna Kimball, was also a Weber School District teacher and is on one of our I Love Teaching uh, Award plaques. She was a recipient of that recognition uh, a few years ago. Heather and her husband Robert have two sons. Heather? Hi. Um, my mom is here with me, Donna Kimball, and she was a long time Weber School District teacher. And um, I was uh, lucky to be raised by an educator. And so we both taught fifth grade for many years. I'd like to really thank um, not only my parents, and she's covering for my husband who's moving my younger son from Manila, <laughs> but um, Karen, my principal, Karen Nieswinder, has been an incredible mentor. She um, mentors all of us at the school. She um, challenges us to challenge us to do more than we think we can do and keeps us reaching at, for a higher level. And Dr. Stevens, I'd like to thank you too for um, putting that bug in my ear and saying, keep going with leadership. So thank you. I'm very excited about this opportunity, superintendent and the board, and a little bit nervous, but I've got phone numbers, so I'm going to be able to call. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, superintendent, and congratulations to all those. Um, it's exciting to see the moves and the growth that we get to have within our employees, within our district. Next item board will be the selection of an architect for the new Roy Junior High rebuild. Mr. Kevin Cedarholm, please. Superintendent Board, uh, normally Scott Zelmer would be uh, announcing this to you, but I wanted to let you know that the reason why Scott's not here is he is now a first-time grandpa. And that's kind of a fun thing for him. They they worried because this last week they thought they were going to have to rush the baby right to ICU, and they were ready to do that. And instead, it's turned out bouncy, happy, healthy, bouncing boy. So congratulations to the Zelmers. Uh, a request for pr proposal was issued for architectural services to design the replacement school of Roy Junior High. The following list of pre-approved architectural firms presented their designs to members of the Capital Improvement Committee, as well as principals from Roy Junior High and Rocky Mountain Junior High on April 26, 2018. Those architects were Design West Architects, Naylor Wentworth Lund Architects, NJRA Architects, VCBO Architects, and MHTN. The committee discussed the designs presented to them, and after extensive consideration, the committee unanimously, unanimously voted for the design presented by Design West Architects. It is the recommendation of the Capital Improvement Committee that the Board of Education approve Design West Architects. Thank you, Kevin. Board, you've heard the presentation and the proposal for the new um, rebuild of Roy Junior High, the architect to be Design West. I'd entertain a motion to accept that. So moved by Doug, second by Paul. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, Missy. Thank you. <coughs> Motion carries. Thank you. Kevin, before we move on, I just need to take these, tell these folks that if they turn their phones off for the jazz game, we, this board meeting could go better. <laughs> <laughs> Approval and release of the easement of the Colossimo property. Kevin Cedarholm, please. 
board, Superintendent, Weber School District was granted a right of way on the six acre property located next to Weber School District's property in Harrisville, known as Colossimo, at the time of the purchase in the year 2000. The purpose of the right of way was to give Weber School District access to our, pri our property. The right of way is no longer needed because the surrounding property has been developed and we now have other access into the property. VRE Managers LLC, who currently own and are developing the property where the uh, easement exists, is wanting to develop the ground for homes. They are asking Weber School District to release the right of way. The capital improvement met on April 26, 2018 and agree that this right of way is no longer needed and re recommend to the board that this release of the easement be approved. Thank you, Kevin. Board, you've heard the discussion or the presentation by Kevin Cedarholm on the release of the easement of Colossimo property. I would entertain a motion to accept that. So moved by Dean, second by Mitzi. Any discussion? All in favor? I right, thank you. Thank you, Capital Improvement Committee, for that. Thank you, Kevin. The uh, next item on the agenda board would be the approval of the revised policy 2240, rules governing use of uh, facilities. Second